I am so happy to welcome back to Backstage Buzz a regular and a favorite, Maestro Kirk Muspratt. Welcome, Kirk. Hi, Diana. So you're getting ready for a new show? Yes, November 3 and 4. And Richard Herschel, tell Richard us. Richard Herschel, I love Richard Herschel. He's been in the CSO for about 30 years. I think he got in the wow. orchestra when he was 10 or something 30 like that. years. Yeah, he told me the other day, he said, and I look at him and I go, how could you be playing in the orchestra for 30 years? Because he looks like he's 12 years old. He's one of those ageless men, you know. But um, he is one of the premier cellists in this entire city, and everybody knows that, everybody. So when you, um, when you were figuring out what you wanted to present, did you choose Richard first or the music first? Good question. With this program, I chose the, I made sure Richard was in. So when you knew Richard was in, <clears throat> is that what made you choose? Yeah. Then, I, then I'm going to, finally I can do this yeah. piece, this so, Rachmaninoff so piece. Or, uh, I hate to say this, but it's like being in Vegas. Would you like another card, sir? You know, that kind of thing. So I get Richard and I say, we'll do the Rococo variations. And he's like, great. And I say, now Richard, what about these two pieces, this Rachmaninoff and this Tchaikovsky that's never played, these transcriptions? And I don't know what he's going to say. He's going to go, what, you know, this is never played. And he goes, oh my God, I would love this. I've been dying to play these. So this is yeah. Tchaikovsky music. Mm -hmm. And Rachmaninoff. Mm -hmm. That's that Tchaikovsky's never been played. Is that what you're saying? No, it's written for voice. The Tchaikovsky, the okay. the Lenski aria, is this very sad aria at the end of the opera Eugene Onegin, where these two friends are going to have a duel, mm -hmm. and one of them's going to kill the other one over a oh. woman, and they these two guys love each other, but they're they've made the pa the thing we're going to we have to duel, so now they have to shoot, and so it's it's a it's a tenor aria. It's so sad at the end of this this opera, but it's been transcribed for cello. Oh, wow. So it's hardly ever played, you know? And then the, um, the Rachmaninoff vocalise is written for soprano and orchestra, or soprano and, and, and piano, but we've transcribed it for the cello. We haven't, there's a transcription. And people will go bananas over this. It is so typically Rachmaninoff, heartbreaking, but it's on the cello instead of being sung. Wow! So you went to his house, yes? Yeah. yeah. To work on this on this oh, piece. Oh yeah, every bar. Wow, <laughs> every bar. And we brought a camera along. Yeah. So can can we cut to that and and tell us what we're going to see here? I'm not sure. I, I feel like I'm on uh, on on Colbert. I'm not sure what the. Well, clip let's is. roll the tape. Yeah. No, it, I know it's something probably to do with Richard and I working on how we're going to approach the beginning of the piece, the tempo all those things, and I'm sure it's just a little snippet of all the hours that we spent on every sure. bar. Here but we go. So, can you tell me your thoughts? I mean, I have my thoughts about the beginning of the piece, but you're our soloist, so I'll do whatever you want, of course. Well, I like to find a reflective, tender, thoughtful mood for the, for the piece. So, very dolce. Uh, it's E minor, it's rock my rock, it's sad, of course, yeah. you know. Um, great, because that's the way I hear it. I hear it very, did you say tentative? Tender. I, would, I almost think tentative too, almost like, okay. uh, like you know, like this and so just, you right. know, it's like a question or what's happening or what's going to happen and then of course it blossoms. So if we, if we take a tempo like this, uh, the tempo also is really important. So if I give you this tempo in the orchestra. It's so interesting, you know, every, I think a lot of people think, well, there's the music and everybody plays oh. the notes. <laughs> there's a lot to negotiate and no. discuss. And no, no, <laughs> because I'll say to Richard, um, 
Well, first of all, what he did the other day with me is he played through everything the way he did it. And I marked my score and I went in bar seven, you seem to want a little bit of time when you do the leap. Oh, in bar nine, you seem to want to take a little bit of time when you retake the bow there. In bar 22, it seems like you're doing a crescendo, but I have a diminuendo in the part. Do you want me to change the parts? So then he goes, you know, maybe I don't want that time there, or you're right, I really want time there. And I go, okay, I have to be careful, because I have pizzicati in the bases going boom, 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 boom. So I'm gonna be careful with them. And I have to know what he's going to do at every second and try to accompany him well. So the musicians have a chance to also right. accompany him well. It's, it's very detailed. Uh, we spent two and a half hours the other day just going through two of the pieces. You know, really, each, variation very carefully so that when people come it feels like a piece of cake. That, it's amazing, isn't <laughs> yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. But it's How like theater. I mean, you know, for one scene in a piece oh, of right. theater, everything's gotta which be right. apron, you know, what makeup, when your entrance is, how you move the chair, what kind of chair, where's the light, mm -hmm. what shadow, all that kind of the inflection of the voice, the timing for your partner, you know, it's all amazing detail. And it is, I, I think a lot of time, it is like theater. So. Yeah. He plays the cello. Oh boy. Can he play the cello? <laughs> yeah, he can really play the bloody cello. And it's a rare, it's a it's it's a rare instrument that he's playing as well, isn't it? <clears throat> yeah, his instrument, uh, I, I think we have a clip, I think we have a clip yes. of him talking about his instrument, where he found it in London. And it's, uh, I, my recollection is it's somewhere built around 1700. I think there's a clip. Here we Do go. You see it? I remember visiting you here once before, and your, of course, your unbelievable cello. My mate. Yes, from the early 1700s. 1710. Yes. 1710. 1710, my, my companion. And it's called? It was made by a man named Gofriller. The Go famous. The famous Matteo Gofriller. Right. So I feel so lucky to have it. I've had it for about eight years or so. Mm-hmm. And uh, you found this cello where? Well, I was on tour in London. The uh -huh. orchestra was on tour, and uh, uh, there was an article in the Times of London about a Stradivari cello. And so I saw that I saw the article as I sat down to breakfast on tour, and I thought, "Oh, I want to see it." So I went to the dealer that had it, yeah. and it was a wonderful thing to play. But then he had this cello, and I fell in love with this one. Fantastic. Can you imagine Fantastic. playing something from the 1700s? I know. It's astonishing how careful you have to be and yes. all the trouble the cellists have, they'll go on a flight and some lady will say, you have to put that in baggage. <laughs> oh, and no. they're like, no. And then you say, no, I'll pay for a first class seat. And they say, we don't have one left. And then you have to not get on the airplane and all this, the cellists have a terrible time. So they buy a seat they just for the cello. They buy a seat just for the cello, yes. So everywhere they go. And you know, Richard has probably at least two cellos. So let's say they're playing you know, a Star Wars gig at Ravinia and it's 90 degrees out or something, he will not take that cello. He'll take one of his other good cello. Okay. Yeah. But, it, you know, you just think, who has, who has been around that instrument? Was Beethoven around that instrument? Right. Was Schumann around that instrument? Was Mahler around that instrument? Was Debussy around that instrument? Was it in Paris? Was it in Warsaw? Was it in Moscow? Was it in Berlin? Did Von Karajan conduct when it was being used? And the instrument's like a human being. You know, it becomes right. like a part of history and a human being. It's pretty incredible. It is. That the, <laughs> there's, it's just amazing. And you know, nobody thinks about that. Like, oh, that guy's going to play the cello, right? <laughs> you know, you're like, no, you don't understand. No, don't touch that cello. That's and, right. and, you know, when he comes out to say hello to me, you know, with me to the patrons and stuff, we will have somebody lock the door. Joe will lock the door. And then one of our stage crew will stand there outside the door. Oh, I don't, I don't blame him. No. So tell me more about this show. Yeah. We're going to see Rachmaninoff. We're going to yeah. see Tchaikovsky. Mm -hmm. Yep. What else are we going to see? You're going to actually see more Tchaikovsky and hear more Tchaikovsky, Diana, at the end of the first half, because we're going to play some excerpt from Sleeping Beauty. Oh, beautiful. I know, and kids should come, too, because we all know Sleeping Beauty, and Disney used the Tchaikovsky sure. music. So right at the end of the first half, we'll play some excerpt from Sleeping Beauty. On the second half of the program, we're going to play my favorite but not your favorite. I know you like five the best. <laughs> I like four the best, and we're gonna play four. And it's not Beethoven one- Beethoven Fourth. Yeah, Beethoven Fourth Symphony. It's written just two years before your favorite. It's written in 1806 or something, in what we call middle period Beethoven. And it is a more subtle, more 
not world-changing piece, but it's gracioso and beautiful and elegant and exciting. And mostly it's full of beans. This piece, it shows you what a great sense of humor Beethoven, poor Beethoven, who's already deaf by that time, has. He has this wonderful sense of humor still. And I think it's well shown in this fourth symphony. You know, I was talking to a patron the other day and they said, you know why I like going to the shows at the Mac, the concerts uh, with New Phil? I said, what's that? He goes, I love that guy. <laughs> I go, the conductor? He said, yeah, because I learn a little bit every oh. time I see a show and, and I like knowing the backstory and, and he makes it accessible. And I said, that's why I like it. I'm like, you know, I never, I never really understood all these nuances. And, and I think the more we know, the more we appreciate, you know? Sure. So, so when we know, okay, this song was written after Beethoven couldn't hear anymore. Right. It gives you a different appreciation. Right. Or like you said, you know, he had a sense of humor. So oh. tell us what, what, how do you mean he has a sense of humor? Well, okay, so for a music nerd like me, okay, <laughs> which I am, obviously, uh -huh. um, the first chords in the introduction. His teacher, Haydn, would have done, oh, here's a cup, and it's on a table, and it's full of water, of course, right? But Beethoven's put vodka in it. So the second or third chord, already he's breaking all the rules. Okay. And people who are listening in 1806 are going, huh, is that a bunch of mistakes? What's he doing? And then, of course, he comes back, and everything's fine. It's like Penn and Teller. All of a sudden, it's water again. Everything's fine. I made a bad metaphor. But right away, he's playing jokes on our ears. And it's full of bubbles and Sprite and champagne and joy and ebullience. So and it's youth. playful when you yes, don't expect it. Exactly. And springtime and all this stuff with this guy going through a revolution where Napoleon has just gone through Vienna, where the world is terrible, where he's broke. Oh, he's moved three times that year because he's broke. And he's deaf. He's only 36 years old and he's completely deaf. And, and I'm, he's flat broke, the poor guy. And, you know, somebody's given him 50 bucks or something to p write a piece. Wow. But he has this God, beautiful heart, uh, joy in him that we don't think about so much with Beethoven, but he does. He absolutely has this beautiful... Well, you know, in, in history of, of the arts, yeah. every time countries go through bad things, yeah. you know, like the war or the Nazi occupation, that's when you find some of the best work that has come out, right? Mm -hmm. And people respond to it. Right. And, 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 right. and it's, it's a way to cope. Right. You know, the arts are a way to cope and it's a way to express ourselves and it's a way to connect and it's a way to find humanity. And, and it's interesting to me that you said Napoleon was invading and yet he wrote something that was playful, that was irreverent, that was speaking out to the, mm -hmm. you know, against the norm. Yeah, uh, and, exactly. And, and, and in, in the 1800s, that's how you did it, through, you mm -hmm. know, through a classical piece. Yeah. Now we have rap stars that, and movies you know, and, and right. MTV and you know all sorts of stuff where we could we could express those things or CNN even if you want to right. set your mind or you text somebody and say hey how do you feel about this um, and then they had to express themselves kind of silently in a way subtly. through music yes, very subtly, subtly. You know, um, it was Not interesting silently. last night when I was thinking about our interview the the piece that uh, Richard's going to play from Eugene Onegin we call it the um, Lenski aria. It's from this, this opera, and the, and the opera, the text, the book of it is by Pushkin. So it's a very long, serious, Russian winter, <laughs> cold, you know, and you think what these people were going through in 1876, while there's still a czar, where all the peasants are starving to death, while there's no democracy, while there's horrible cold, while there's no firewood. It's just 30 years before the first revolution in 1905 when people say, we can't take it anymore. And at this time also, Tchaikovsky's also contemplating suicide oh. because he's gay. And he and his brother are both gay and they have to keep it a secret. And if they're ever found out in 1876, they're dead. Gulag. Right. Yeah, or just work them to death. Start, you know, like have them chop down trees in the gulag. So and he's so depressed because he can't talk about this in society. He can't express this. His brother has to hide it also. You know, and, and this, uh, when you hear this piece, it's so full of, you know, he, what he's saying in the aria, but he's going to say it on the cello, mm -hmm. is 
He's looking at the river. It's the morning. His friend's going to come. One of them's going to die. They're both in love with the same woman. And he's going, where is life gone? Springtime's coming. This beautiful, you know, all this is here. Mm -hmm. In an hour, I'm not going to see this anymore, or my friend isn't going to see it anymore. And it's so Russian. It's so Russian, you know, it's so Russian. And I tease, and I hope I don't get in trouble with this. In Canada, we produce art, yeah. Sure. But we're not known for our great plays or our great, this or great, because we have such a nice country. You know, we're all nice. We have socialized Everybody's medicine. happy. Everybody's happy. We got hockey. <laughs> you know, we got a two-car garage. You know, we have a deer in our backyard. And you have a cottage. You're absolutely right about this angst that happens with Pushkin writing a play or a, a novel or Beethoven or Tchaikovsky. All of this, this terror has to come out in people, and we have to find a way forward. You know? We will. With Humanity art. always does. We always yeah. win. So, let's end this on a happier note. Okay. I want to end it on this clip that I saw. <laughs> oh, yeah. Of Richard playing with his daughter. Yes, he has two daughters. They're both really musical. And uh, Vivian happened to be there. And they, the girls and I get along great. They, you know, we tease and we do all sorts of fun. And she came bouncing in. And so, I, mean, I said, Richard, would, you know, you know, Vivian play something with you? And he's like, sure, you want to play something with me? So here's Richard playing something with his daughter. Roll the tape. Vivian, what's the piece you're going to play? Luli Gavat. Oh, Luli Gavat. I can't wait to hear it. All right, maybe if we start off how. She's adorable. That oh, was yes. awesome. Yeah, they're both wonderful people. I know that the patrons are going to enjoy meeting Richard so much because he's a first-class human being and a, a wonderful artist. Well, so are you. Thank you so much. You. The CSO cellist Richard Herschel will be at the MAC alongside New Philharmonic on November 3rd and 4th. For tickets or more information, please visit at themac.org or call 630-942-4000. The MAC has a really unique series called National Theatre Live. These programs are live broadcasts from the London stages, and you can see the shows right here in Glen Ellen on the MAC's big screen. So you can see Olivier and Tony Award-winning actors performing in these plays via the magic of telecasts. Here's a snip of King Lear starring Ian McKellen. Blow winds and crack your cheeks, rage blow. You cataracts and hurricanes spout till you have drenched our steeples, drowned the cocks. You sulfurous and thought executing fires, font couriers of oak cleaving thunderbolts, singe my white head. Here I stand, your slave. Infirm, weak, and despised old man. The Max National Theatre Live Series consists of four world-class productions telecast to our theatre. For each show, there is an afternoon and an evening showtime available. This year, our broadcasts include Julie on October 4th and 7th, King Lear on November 8th and 11th, The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime on December 12th and 16th, and The Madness of King George III on February 14th and 17th. Don't miss any of these great events coming soon to the MAC. Campania Flamenca, Eduardo Guerrero in the presentation of Flamenco Passion on Sunday, October 21st at 2 and 6 p.m. Woo! 
Snake Oil's tribute to rock's biggest stars of the 80s on Saturday, October 27th. Come early for our hairband costume contest with prizes going to the best dressed. The College Dance Fall Fusion Showcase is on Friday, November 2nd. Pete the Cat is back at the MAC on Friday, November 9th at 7 p.m. Come visit us for a holiday classic, College Theater's A Christmas Carol, running November 23rd through the 25th. The DuPage Community Jazz Ensemble will take the stage on November 29th. For more information, be sure to visit atthemac.org.